Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about finding your style. I'm trying to find my style myself. I'm kind of on the crossroad right now. I um, did so many different things. I did pouring paint, I'm pouring acrylic pouring, I did um, encaustic, I did um, alcohol inks, I did um, acrylics, never mind having my own style in that. It wasn't, I just did whatever I felt like it. There's no consistency and it gets frustrating. It's just like you're lost in all this, these ideas. So I kind of want to focus on something I really enjoy doing and can do long term and maybe some other people actually would like to and maybe then I will sell my art. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, how to find your style, how I'm going to find my style, stay tuned. Okay, so the method I'm trying to <coughs> use to, whoops, to uh, find my style is sort of based on, um, his name is Nicholas Wilton. He's got an online class, but it's kind of expensive and his free class hasn't, isn't up yet. So I'm just trying to do my own. And his, his kind of teaching is that you um, take what you like from other art and other artists what you're attracted to, also like your your colors and the way you want to paint, sort of your style, I guess. Um, make a, I write it down, all the, the things you're interested in. So from, in my case, it is bright colors, texture. I like floral, landscape, uh, and the feminine figure. I like to use markers, like make marks. Of, uh, so that's and I yeah that's pretty much it and abstract I like it in abstraction I enjoy doing that that's what I learned from all doing all these art different art styles I did learn that I do like abstract even though it can be frustrating but I mean everything can be frustrating if we do realism is frustrating especially at the beginning you get it perfectly I could never do that I don't have the patience for that and yeah anyway then, with other things he emphasizes is to have a lot of contrast. To make sure you have contrast in your paintings. And, you know, you have the right composition. And you have value. So the different values don't have all the same values, then it's going to look boring. If it's all the same, well, color value, right? Yeah, so these are the sort of the principles I'm starting at, anyway. So what I did is I went to the computer. Pinterest and uh, made a little collage on on the computer and printed it out. The things I really like. These are not all of them, but this is some of them. What I'm gonna do is just gonna cut them out and stick them on my wall over there, so I can look at it when I try and start to paint. Okay, that's one first thing I'm gonna do. Then next thing, I got my new sketchbook here. I have another, an older one too. Anyway, we, oops, the light is getting bad. I am going to um, start experimenting with the colors I like and the style I like and just go for it. I use the tools I like in my sketchbook. And the good thing about this sketchbook is I actually can pull the pages out so I can kind of lay them out and I'm thinking I'm going to do four at once and put them on. I don't have my big table anymore, so I'm just going to put them on the floor and try to um, just figure out. To, it's good to work on more than one piece. So let's do that. Okay, guys, we're back. So because this um, little tarpy thing is very bumpy. I decided to put them on the wood blocks. They're a little more straight. I'm going to try to put uh, some colors down. It's just my one of my favorite colors, I guess. So this, this is, uh, what's it called? Turquoise blue. Well, of course it's turquoise blue. <laughs> I haven't used that much, obviously. It's still pretty stuck. I'm just going to Put a little bit of water. And I'm just going to use a brush. I'm 
little nervous, but you know. <laughs> you don't achieve anything if you don't ever start, so yeah. but then I can put them together. That looks neat. Get a little bit of movement. But uh, fuchsia would be a great color to, you know, complement the teal. And again, I just apply the color wherever I think I should put it. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. This process is all about layering and just putting color down and see what works together and what doesn't. And using different kinds of tools like this one to move the paint around. If you enjoy this video and want to see more of my videos, please make sure you subscribe at the end of the video and uh, ring the bell so you get notified when their new videos are up. this stage I'm just using pretty much the same um, value colors and contrasting colors that way I can see how they work together and in the next phase stage as you can see coming up I will use more value in the colors and I'll do that by adding black and white to change the value of the, all these colors Okay, so far we have gone this far <laughs> and now I'm going to just try to work on each of them individually and see what I can come up with, see where it takes me. I just kind of threw water and paint down and now I'm just going to try to 
come up with the composition and yeah so let's do that okay so starting with this one <coughs> you got some hand brushes my other trusty tools here water and let's start with some with some white I still got the same colors as before I'm not going to change the colors too much I don't think so there's a the yellow so let's start doing that I think it's better upside down and not horizontal I don't know. I'll try it this way. Guess maybe I should tape it down. It doesn't move around as much. It's done the top. I'm just gonna use it out of there. of the same colors you create depth and interest in the painting so it's more interesting than just having all the same value The idea with the white is to give it some light, put some light into the painting and just free up some space so it's not so cluttered and so busy. Just give it some quiet, brighter spots and I usually do it more in more than one area so your eye kind of wanders to the different areas of the painting. But I mean, this is not by far not done. There's a lot of other things, layers that go, I'm gonna go on top of it, but this just kind of helps to find, uh, to find the um, composition. It helps you, the, your eye to understand the painting a little more. Okay, 
Okay. Let's let this one dry and try the next one. Whoops. So I decided not to show you all four of them because it's pretty much the same process I did with all four of them. You can see the picture at the end of this video. And make sure you stay tuned for the next one because then you can see how the painting evolves and maybe see if I actually stick with this process or not for my future painting endeavors, my style. If you like this video you should watch the one previous one because I explain all about my tools and what I use to do these paintings so make sure to go check that out it's linked up here so I'll see you in that video